So here we are then for more F1 manager here today. This is round number seven and we're going to jump into things at the Monaco Grand Prix. Could be an interesting race, could be a painful one. We're going to find out. One thing we do know, Monaco is, of course, notoriously difficult for overtaking. So let's see what happens. If you'd like to go to enjoy, subscribe for more. And if you haven't seen the previous episode at Spain, then go watch it because spoilers are ahead. So go check it out. But yeah, let's get into it. Now, just to quickly update you guys, for this race weekend at Monaco, we have a new rear wing, which we have already manufactured and put onto the car. So we'll see if that gives us an improvement in terms of performance. Heading into the weekend, though, we're sixth in the constructors. And yeah, McLaren did score pretty big points in Spain last time out, thanks to Lando Norris. So we're looking to try and hopefully hold on to P6 and possibly extend our gap over Alfa Romeo. So let's get into it. So in terms of race performance targets, we've gone for guaranteeing Q2 with one car. I've not guaranteed a fastest lap as I don't think we're going to go for it at Monaco as track position is going to be everything around here and also qualifying position streak. I've started a new one, so zero out of four. We'll see if we can try and beat it. But yeah, that is all. Let's get practice on the way. Okay, wet race. News to me. I didn't actually see this before, so could be an interesting Monaco Grand Prix after all. Well done, guys. We're good. Happy. Copy that. Alonso happy then, 100%. Sebastian current at 96, so we're looking on good calls here to hopefully max out the Alps. So just to update midway through the weekend, Friday running has finished. Valtteri Bottas looking very strong for Alfa Romeo as the standout performer so far. As for us, further down, P16, P17, I think we're a bit off the pace, I'm not going to lie. But we've maxed out Alonso's setup, hopefully we can achieve it with Seb now FP3. And we can then focus on qualifying and more importantly the race with that range forecast. Yeah, copy. So we've got what we need, both cars 100% track acclimatization, 100% self-confidence and 95 car part knowledge. So we can now bring them in, save the engine basically and call it there. Now FP3 has finished, you can see we have both drivers here with a maximum score. So happy days, a new rear wing doing its job and we have the highest possible performance bonus. So. That's going to help us out for the rest of the weekend. Hopefully we can convert that into good pace in qualifying and especially in the race in the changeable weather. Now I was tempted to actually run the old components for this race, but I'm actually going to play it safe and actually use the fresher engine for this one, especially because of the race situation. I want to make sure we maximize that race with the rain. So yeah, we're going to run the freshest components, which will give us a performance boost and give us a bit more pace in qualifying. So both drivers currently on laps, Alonso getting a bit of traffic on his way. Sebastian having a much clearer run. Let's see what Alonso's first lap is. A second off the pace. Let's see what Sebastian has to say. Had a much clearer lap, so I'm expecting decent pace. No, 1.8, wow. Must have got held maybe in the first sector. We did have to go past Russell, so that might have been wide, but it looked pretty smooth from this angle anyway. Let's see what they do on the second fly lap here. As Alonso is gonna have a lot of traffic that looks like a lot of cars to pass, to be fair. Vettel hits Russell at turn one. Alonso clearing the traffic, but this has not been a good second lap. Alonso does not improve as expected. I don't think Sebastian will either. Across the line. Okay, Seb does improve. There we go. So that's more of a realistic lap time for us. So more time to farm with Fernando. Right then, here we go. Both drivers out at the back of the queue. So we're going to get nice, clear track for this final run. Let's see, you can see Alonso tailing Sebastian. Maybe a little bit too close for comfort here. I, I thought I'd send them out a little bit more further apart, but they seem to have actually got a bit closer to one another. And not ideal was I have Seb out in front. I put Alonso out of the back originally to give him the better track conditions, but he might actually get some dirt yet because of it. Let's see though, sector one, personal best Sebastian. It's not a personal best of Fernando, but that's not where Alonso's issue is. Alonso's issue is the second sector. So let's see. I really hope this doesn't cost Alonso. I know Dirty Air is more of a thing since the latest patch. I just hope it doesn't ruin our chances. Lap time's coming in. Both Alphataris have locked in their laps. Stroll was definitely vulnerable. To be fair, I'd even argue Albon might be as well. Let's see. Both of our drivers on the cutoff. Ricardo's done. Both Williams' cars are done. Joe across the line. Also done. Does not improve. So. I think we're safe here. We've got away with it, luckily enough. But let's see what our drivers manage to do. Sebastian P12, Fernando overtakes it. 
So that looks pretty decent, actually. That's quite encouraging. So both drivers, as you saw, into Q2. And by quite some margin, to be fair, by two, three tenths. I mean, we were safe anyway after our first lap, but that is guaranteed that we've got decent enough pace. And to be fair, if we scroll up, I'd argue we're not a million miles away from, I'd say, Magnus and P7. Um, we're in the fight for, I think. It could be an interesting one. Definitely in the battle for P9. I think that's possible. So both our drivers out there, hopefully looking to get some clear track. Alonso is going to have Stroll in the way. Sebastian's going to have Albon in the way. So both Alpha Tauris are going to be traffic for us. Sebastian's going to hit Albon. Oh, right in the worst part, Mirabeau and the Lowe's hairpin. Meanwhile, Alonso's going to hit Stroll at the swimming pool. So not ideal. We're on a single flyer here. So let's see. It doesn't look like a great opening couple of laps. No, Sebastian, look at that. Really badly got held there. Right, so going out for the final runs, fresh set of tyres, and this time we've got a nice clear track, and I've also spaced out both drivers. So, Alonso is going to be the one leading the charge this time around. Sebastian will follow a bit further back. He'll get the better track conditions, as he's, of course, always a little bit slower than Alonso, in one lap pace especially. So, let's see. Lap time is coming in, expecting big improvements from lots of cars. So, our first lap really isn't any sort of reference. First reference I said we're aiming for, you know, Gasly, Norris, Russell, to be fair. Um, let's see. Let's see what other lap times people set. So far, it's a personal best in the first for Fernando, not for Sebastian. Alonso on a very strong lap here, though. A couple of green sectors. I think if we could beat both Alpha Tauris, that would be pretty sweet. Then there's a bit of a gap to the Alpines. Alonso across the line. Goes P11, just misses out. Sebastian Vettel across the line. P13, not too shabby to be fair. We split the Alpines. I'll take that. So we lose both cars in Q2. And Verstappen's setting the pace. But as you can see, a pretty decent performance actually. I initially was a bit coy on expectations. I wasn't too sure if Monaco really suited our car. But Fernando really clutched up there. That's a massive improvement from Q1 to Q2. 1.3 tenths. That is massive for F1 manager. Especially around Monaco, such a short lap. For uh, Sebastian, matched his lap time, so I can't really complain. Maybe a bit more pace, but even still, he was two tenths off Gasly, so I uh, can't really argue with that. But yeah, we split the Alpines. That's an encouraging performance, to be fair. Uh, Magnussen also found quite a bit of pace, so a fair play to him as well. But yeah, we're in the mix, and we're definitely uh, looking at maybe a couple of points in the race. But now we're going to see what that rain has to say, because that could be the decisive factor. So, at the moment, this is the data we have regarding the rain. So... It's going to be a pretty heavy shower, a pretty drastic change in that five minute spell. And then that rain is set to continue pretty much for the rest of the race. So I think we do not want to be stopping here. Now the question is, do I go for a soft or do I go for a medium? It kind of aligns with a soft tire. So maybe it might pay off to be aggressive for a change. So this is what we're going to go for. I'm going to go standard modes. I'm not going to go aggressive, but we're going to underfuel both cars by a lap. I'm kind of factoring in the rain here as well. Um, I want a slightly lighter car, which might help with tire management. And we're going to start both cars on the soft and go for the hard tire. It should align with the rain arriving as long as there's no big delays. I'm going to take a gamble here. I was tempted to go medium, but the soft could be a better option in terms of maybe holding P11, P13 and hopefully moving into the points if we time the strategy right. So let's get into it and let's see what happens. I don't want to tempt fate, but there are quite a few clouds overhead as we look at the lineup on the grid. Looking at Fernando Alonso here. Slower than most yesterday, so today they'll be starting from the bottom half of the grid. And for the second driver, it's Sebastian Vettel. They'll be starting the race from the bottom half of the grid, so there's a fair bit of ground to make up. The race start is mere seconds away. It's time for one of the most exciting races in the world. This is the Monaco Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. Right then, underway. Good start from Sebastian. Also, Fernando gaining a place, each of them already. If we look at the tyres. Nicely done. Gazi on the hards. Arcona medium, Bottas on medium, Leclerc on medium. So important that we just try and make progress here. 
Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. Sebastian on a 10% fresher soft than Russell. So I think those on you softs might struggle to actually make it to the rain. Whereas, you know, the fact we have an extra 10% is a good thing for us. But yeah, I'm hoping the lighter car will just help us manage our tyres a bit and be a bit more quicker, I'd say, in the first in. But for now, I'm going to actually see if we can go for it with Fernando here and try to get past Ocon. Energy if you need it. Okay, copy. I feel like it's going to be extra important that we try to just get ahead of the Alpine here. Copy. So let's commit with a bit of engine mode and see if we can clear him as he's on the medium tyre. And then we'd be behind a couple of soft runners on 10% you know, more worn tyres and then a few more medium runners. So Alonso would be in a pretty good position to make something happen. Here goes Fernando up the inside into turn one and is going to get the job done in the drag race up the hill. There we go, happy days. So Sebastian currently pushing here. I'm trying to see if I can maybe get him to put some pressure on and maybe even pass Russell. If he can pass Russell, he'll get Ocon, which I know will be easy to make. So we've just got to try and see if we can pass George. And then it could be game on in this race. We'll try again. Full push mode here with Sebastian, including fuel, I'm taking a chance, but got to be, got to be bold, got to be brave on Monaco. But just no way through here. Okay, never mind. We're going to fall back. Seb's clearly stuck. So we'll just try and save a bit of fuel. Fernando, they're doing a good job. He's holding on quite nicely. Ocon just about dropping out of the RS range. Fernando, they're very comfortable here. This is looking pretty good for us. Bottas holding up a train. So P6 on the table as things stand. Now that rain is still on target to arrive. Pretty hefty shower coming in. And there's been no change, so we'll keep an eye on it. We're going to go push mode here with Alonso to try and get Norris, which is, of course, very important for the championship. You guys know about our battle with McLaren from last season and this season, so go and deploy. Trusting Alonso's aggression here to maybe go for the move, and there we go, straight away he gets it done. That's the difference between him and Alonso and, and Sebastian at the moment. Alonso just gets job done, gets things done. It's just so much easier. Okay, Dark Skies... I'm going to try and go for it. We've got a 35% chance of rain in four minutes. So we're going to go for more engine mode here and try to get Magnussen as well. But here we go. Engine mode engaged. Can we get Magnussen? Come on, Fernando. Let's try and get that Haas. You can see how oh, the Haas pulls away in the slow speed. But then we've got that very good top speed. Come on, come on. Let's try and get by here, Fernando. I'm going to keep the engine mode on, mate. Come on, Fernando. Have we got anything in the tank? Nope. I think we're out of juice. I think this train is going to reform because Archon and the medium is dragging. Well, it's going to start dragging Russell and Sebastian along. And I can see Archon's gaining now on Norris, Alonso, and Magnussen. So Magnussen's going to essentially be the de facto leader in a seven car train as Albon also approaching from behind. So. Yeah, this is all going to jump up. You can see now Ocon 2.3 behind. The mediums have got the advantage. Magnussen now 2.4 far away from Bottas. Seb has just dropped out of the RS range from Russell. Ocon putting the pace on now. 1.5, 1.3 behind Norris. So everybody is going to just jump into a little train here behind Magnussen. And now it's going to be a race of just trying to hold on and suffer with the tyres. Those who started on, on mediums now have the advantage. But I mean, even the medium runners are running a bit thin on rubber now. So... Let's, let's see, this race could get interesting. So Sebastian has now caught up to Russell. And hopefully I'm confident he can try to stay within DRS. Not super, super confident, but at least maybe for a lap, just try and stay there. Um, elsewhere, Russell can't actually keep up. He's also struggling. He's two seconds away from Ocon, who's putting pressure on Norris. Alonso is chilling behind Magnussen, but now the rain is starting. So we're going to see a quick transition here in terms of weather. So all eyes on the forecast. It's going to be into this lap already. Looking at this, it's going to be into this already. My question is, if we hang on one more lap, could we go straight onto the wets? Do we go for the wets? It's really falling. It's an absolute monsoon. This rain's going to last a while. I'm going to go for the wets. Why not? Let's take a chance. Let's take a punt. We'll box both cars for wets. Actually... I'll change Seb to Inters, I'll split them. Let's try and get these points, so let's split the strategies. Okay. 
So Verstappen, what tyres is he on? Set of intermediates. Some cars are staying out. Opting to not double stack. Sebastian pit lane. Yeah, confirmed. Right, Alonso in. For the full wets. Sebastian straight in behind, like a, a car production line. Well, that rain's falling, man. That's gonna be. This is gonna be really interesting. Everybody's gone for inters. Oh no, actually, Sainz has gone for wets, and so has Hamilton. Bottas intermediate. So we have a bit of a split here. You've got the full rainbow of colours. Let's see if you're on the hard tire to complete the rainbow. Right. Let's have a little look then, and let's see what happens here then. But this is a bit of a lottery. Looks like Seb hasn't lost much. He's actually behind Norris in terms of, you know, net on track. Magnussen has gone for wet spot house onto the Inter. Russell out there. Ocon, Leclerc, they're throwing away their heart. They're good work on the soft. Let's try and drive through it and let's see what happens. Let's keep the strategy split. Look at this. Alonso in the thick of it here. Norris has got past. Russell, the mobile chicane. Alonso's on the inside, which is the worst place to be because Russell's going to peel off into the pit entry and that's going to affect Alonso. Carl Fernando, get Norris. There we go. Can Sebastian get Norris here? This is good, come on. Not quite. The rain's holding at four, so it's just wet enough for the full wets. So there's Leclerc, who of course had to trundle around on the dry tyre. Alonso just behind. Perez has gone for the inter. So still some split strategies going on. Either way, both of our cars are in the top 10. So a bit of a cool down period now in the rain, which will benefit the inter runners, but then we've got another heavy shower on the way, which will help Alonso. I think the wet tire was the right decision because it's just going to be the faster tire for a while. You can see he's already pulling away from Lando and Sebastian. Seb's got pressure from Albon behind, but let's try and get Bottas here. This would be good for the Constructors Championship if we could pass him. Got uh, Williams leaving the pit exit, which is going to allow us to jump Bottas beautifully there. Thank you very much. Sebastian clears the Williams, who was a lap down. Tire wear is very low on these wet tires, so we could go into this all the way to the end, which is something I wasn't too sure about, hence why I split the strategies. Magnussen in a phenomenal P4 here. I've got to try and see if we can catch up to him right now. Though. It's going to benefit the intermediate runners at tr current track conditions. Sebastian, you can see has dropped Albon, so intermediates are the way to go right now, but more rain inbound. I'm going to try and use this phase of the race where it's a bit in between conditions to save a bit of fuel. The rain has literally just started to pick back up here, so Alonso should start to benefit. Okay, Fernando tucked right in behind the Leclerc and Perez. Perez, a mobile chicane here, look, using Perez as a way past. Meanwhile, Sebastian just got overtaken by Albon. Those wet tires working well, and they're now fighting back through the field compared to the inter runners so this race is a bit of an emotional roller coaster this one so far this is some really intense rain i've got alonso on attack mode i want to see if we can get leclerc if we can get leclerc we'll get perez easily so i want to see if we can try and clear both right now sebastian is in no man's land this is where we're going to play the long game with seb go to the end of the intermediate that's going to be the strategy with him whereas with alonso we're going to have to stop for inters later on maybe even drives so now is the time to push. Don't have a lot of battery. No DRS. Let's try and push on fuel and see if we can make something happen. But this is some really intense rain. Leclerc looking for the move on Perez. Doesn't quite make it work. Come on, Fernando. Let's try and get this move. You can see Perez 12 seconds behind Magnussen. This would be a great time to pass. Look at the cue Sebastian's holding up. All these cars are going to get by. It's just the way it is right now. Sebastian is in no man's land. Russell also got past. Stroll looking to get by. The rain's starting to drop now. And that was a crucial period for Kevin Magnussen, who's got a 17 second lead over Perez. We needed that phase to make progress. And it didn't work out. And the rain is just going to start dropping now. So that was it for the wet tyre. We're now going to push with Sebastian. We've saved a decent bit of fuel, to be fair. But now's the time to push a little bit with Seb to try and pick up that pace and not lose too much ground in this race. Alonso's going to pit this lap and get off those wets. Leclerc pits with him. Bit of a shame there. That was a real golden opportunity to make the strategy work, like Kevin Magnussen. 
who has stayed out on the wet tire to be focused interesting that could ruin his strategy alonso will rejoin and you can see it we're just behind sebastian so Sepp going out to the end hopefully he can keep the club behind him but we're gonna push straight away here and waste no time so right now only magnuson left on the wets everybody else on inters and magnuson is choosing to stay out which is very interesting okay so both drivers now just in standard modes Leclerc still not able to get past Sebastian. We've uh, managed to save a fair bit of fuel, so we're just 0.3.4 away respectively. Magnussen is holding up Perez and Bottas, and now Norris and Sebastian are going to come back into play here. There's no more... I mean, there's a bit more of a shower here, but I don't think there's going to be enough for wet. It's going to be touch and go. No battery left. Surely we can get past that with the tire advantage. Come on, Seb. There we go. Straight through. Happy, happy days. This Magnuson train is becoming pretty slow now. I don't understand the Haas logic, but anyway, Leclerc's going to get first chance at going for the move. And he goes around the outside. Fernando will also follow through, luckily enough. So we'll take that. That will hopefully help Alonso pull away from Albon, who was going to get stuck behind for a little while. Sebastian's got a nice little gap now. A bit of traffic here. Have just gained a race position. Which will clear in the tunnel. Happy days. And now look at that, Leclerc stuck with that traffic. Alonso almost puts a move on, but not quite. Albon now 2.5 behind. Okay, the rain is now falling again rapidly. I'm not going to fall for it. I'm going to try to stick with the Inter here. This is a lot of rain though, 4.8. Okay, we're now net positive on fuel. We've saved what we need, so we can just let the car drive now for the rest of the race. Rain's still in the 4 plus, but nobody's boxing for the 4 where nobody's being fooled by the conditions now. Could be a pretty straightforward race to the end, to be fair. But you know what? P7, P9, that's good points for us. Okay, so this last bit of rain has actually dwindled. So we could be looking at dry tyres once the tyre wear drops below 1 here. The question is, will there be cars at Gamble? Rain, Right, this is it. 10 laps to go. Is it worth a shot on the dries? I'm going to take a chance and pit for dries, I think. I don't think it's going to be enough. There's going to be seven full laps and we're going to hit dry period right now. DRS will be enabled, so Leclerc will get by. I'm going to pit Sebastian first. He would rejoin behind Stroll. Let's go for it. Why not? I'm willing to accept the consequences of this not working out, but I'm trying to cover off Leclerc here. So Seb is going to be the only car to pit. So Sebastian, make sure you get your pit limiter, pit limiter as you come in the pit lane. And we'll box Fernando on this lap. For a set of softs. And let's see, man, let's just gamble. If this goes well, and the track dries, we're going to be super, super quick anyway. So we'll have the advantage of the question is, has it been patched yet? You know, in terms of how tires work. I mean, Bottas is in, Norris is in. So to be fair, this is now an undercut attempt. So I'm going to push flat out with Seb. Alonso as well. We're going to go for it. We're going to deploy. Sebastian making moves here. We've got to just push. Leclerc, I'm expecting... No, he stays out. Wow, okay. That's because Sainz is in the pit lane. So everyone's in. So um, I think with a great play there. They've moved up a place. we made the right call. Seb's got to clear this traffic though. He's lost a lot of time. Just get past Russell. There we go. Alonso leaving the pit lane. We'll go flat out with Fernando as well. Vettel should be comfortably ahead of Leclerc. Who comes in for tyres. What about Alonso? He's currently in the thick of it. He's lost a bit of time actually. And he's going to drop out the points, I think. Something's gone wrong with uh, Alonso there. Look at that scrap. It's all kicking off. But Fernando has uh, ended up losing out somehow. I didn't quite catch it. Come on, Fernando. Let's try and get P10. Let's try and get a point. A point is good. Come on. This is it. Albon doesn't have DRS. But Alonso is nowhere near close enough. You'll get a second chance, but it's not going to be enough. We're going to miss out on the points here. With Fernando, this is really gutting. So Sebastian Vettel, P7. 
Alonso okay, so isn't going to make it. Flag. Strategy was good. Brilliant. Brilliant. Take all the pick up on the way in. Well done. Damn. Could have actually pushed, to be fair. Take all the pick up you can. All the pick up you can. So, lesson learned for the next time we get lapped. If you get lapped, you do indeed are able to go under a kilo or so of fuel, basically another lap, and you won't run out because we had 1.1 left with Fernando, we was fine. So, yeah, it is what it is. Sebastian Vettel, though, P7, does get a, a few points, which is good. Keeps us in the mix. Shame about that last stint. I don't know what happened with Alonso. They asked, you know, it's so hard to focus on both drivers that I didn't fully see what happened. But, yeah, Alonso, unfortunately, misses out on the points. But... It is what it is. Bad news today, Bottas P5. Well, to be expected, Alfa Romeo is very strong in low speed and Lando Norris P6. Uh, other than that, though, it's not too shabby. If we look at the Drivers' Championship, Sebastian now just two points behind Fernando. So we've got a pretty, you know, balanced spread overall so far this season. Lando up to P7 and Science is your new championship leader. In the Constructors, we dropped to 7th. Alfa Romeo overtake us by three points, which is not ideal, but... At least we did score some points and we're definitely pulling away from the bottom of three teams now. So it's looking like a battle. Aston Martin, Alfa Romeo and McLaren for that P5 spot this season, I think. And it's all going to come down to upgrades and that development race. Alpine having a pretty poor race here today. But yeah, in terms of points bonuses, Alonso not doing the best. But Sebastian does score a pretty hefty points total. And yeah, we move on. No extra points for any of the driver. Finally, payouts. We have to pay Seb, of course, his bonus for getting the points. But we still score 2.7 mil. So we're going to have to spend some money here to refurbish the boardroom, as it is in poor condition. So we've got an email about it. The board has grown in confidence, which is good. So we'll take that, another positive race. And then here is a debrief. So engine cooling of car one could be improved. Adaptability of Fernando Alonso could also be improved. So the next race is Baku in 11 days. I'm not going to continue any further. We'll take care of the R&D on stream for the next episode. But here is the calendar update. So... Nothing going on this week, and then next week we have the boardroom upgrade, and then we go to Baku back to back with Canada the week after. To be fair, I say that, I'm looking at this now, the ATR period ends, so we may have to just get an upgrade on the go now, just to kind of start on it. We have underfloor and front wing on the way. Now we're going to go for a chassis, and we're going to invest everything we have left here in terms of CFD and wind tunnel, which will get our numbers up drastically, and this will help us out quite a bit. It will give us a bit more drag, but you can see the engine cooling is going to massively improve. Airflow will also take a small hit, but we're doing this to improve engine cooling. So we're going to go for this. It means that we do lose a bit of drag. We do gain a bit, but it doesn't really affect our top speed that much. However, we gain over 11% on engine cooling, and we do get a small gain on airflow. So we're going to go for this, and we're going to put all of our developers on it, and we're going to go intense to make sure it's good quality and make sure it's optimized. So yeah, right now we have three upgrades on the way. And as of when they arrive, we'll kind of reallocate the engineers and shuffle them around. But all three of these are intense. They're very strong upgrades. So these three are really going to swing our season around, I feel like. It could really change things for us. So let's see what happens. Either way, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Leave a like. If you did, subscribe for more. I'll be back soon for more as we head to Baku next, round eight. And so far, we're looking pretty good. If we look at the boardroom here and the confidence, you know, we have to score points. In 11 races, we've got five so far. So we're on target to, you know, hit that target 50% or more. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy today's episode. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care. And let's go back from here.